Welcome back to Good Morning Kenya. You are just in time for Family Check. And today on Family Check, we will be looking at Sefa Internet Day. It is World um, Sefa Internet Day, uh, which is normally celebrated every fifth day, rather sixth day of February each year. And it is a day that is set aside to raise awareness on uh, safer and be better um, uh, internet use for all and specific specifically for children and young people. And joining me in studio today to take a look at what um, Safer Internet Day is all about and what that celebration looks like here in the country is Mr. Kevin Nyaga. Kevin Nyaga is Child Protection Officer, Directorate of Children's Services. And we also have Madam Magdalene Wanza. She is the County Director, Terdes Om. And then we also have Madam Malatha Ochieng. She is the Program Coordinator, Childline Kenya. Welcome to Good Morning Kenya, and it's a pleasure to have you on set today. So to when we are talking about SEFA Internet Day, what exactly are we looking at and what is the importance, if I may begin with you? Okay, thank you so much, Vivian, and I'm glad that you brought me today to speak about uh, the SEFA Internet Day. So it's a day that is celebrated world worldwide, and uh, during this day we commemorate safety of children online mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, we ensure that our children are protected online mm -hmm. and uh, so that we can have a better society yeah so we realize that currently we are in the digital revolution era and uh, so much is going on in terms of internet and ict so our children are not left out they all access internet as we do because mm -hmm. in our houses we have gadgets we have televisions we have mobile phones and uh, as a result, we realize that uh, because they do not have enough capacity or don't have knowledge to protect themselves online, this day was set aside to remind duty bearers, to remind caregivers, and every other person of ensuring that their children are supposed to be protected and online. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the importance? of it generally, maybe mm. to you, Magdalene. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vivian, and all the viewers. Um, so Safer Internet Day basically um, is, is an event that tries to create awareness mm -hmm. on uh, child online safety mm -hmm. to different uh, stakeholders and bringing players together so that they can sensitize, they can talk about the risks mm -hmm. children face while online. Mm -hmm. So it's a global event, yeah. of course, and in Kenya we, we also celebrate it. Uh, the government leads the event. And uh, this year's event is happening in Nakuru, actually mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it brings together all stakeholders, uh, starting from state, non-state actors, children, uh, the private sector, media, all together mm -hmm. for a better uh, internet, which is the theme for this year. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Kevin, just how does safety on the internet look like for children? Um, maybe I'll start with... I don't want to start by putting across what's wrong with the internet. Mm -hmm. I'll start by what the internet has done for our children. Mm -hmm. Learning, there's so much resource on the internet mm -hmm. and, the, and the connectivity. Mm -hmm. But with, with all that comes a lot of risks and um, we are out here. Every day there's something new coming up. Right, right now we have AI that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So safety for children on the internet is about taking care of their needs, putting their interests first. We always say everything we do for children has to have the best interest of the child at heart in everything you do for children. So there is a cause for concern, mm -hmm. a lot of concern because ideally the internet is an open place we are really not able to, con to, to control what people create, right? But we can try and control what people view, mm -hmm. right? Like our children. So I'd say right now we are facing a lot of challenges um, as a country or as a, across the world on matters child protection because every other time there's always something new and Prevalently, you'll find that people are very, very interested in child pornography and child, child sexual material that is going on online. Mm -hmm. It is something that's, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a moral decay, if I can put that, that is cropping up very fast. Mm -hmm. So, our, this day is meant just to take care of that, 
create awareness and tell people where they need to be mm. and what they need to do and how we can all come together and try to keep our children safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe what are some of the threats? You've mentioned child uh, pornography. What are some of the threats that the internet may pose specifically for the younger people? Okay, so maybe I will uh, start by putting the statistics that are, are currently with us. Mm -hmm. we, we've had two studies. Eh? One of them was the Disrupting Harm Report that was conducted in 2021. And uh, the report stated that 67% of children aged 12 to 17 years are internet users. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, two-thirds of those children do not have the knowledge and skills to navigate the online space. Mm -hmm. Then again, recently in 2022, we also had a baseline survey. We call it the Scroll Baseline Survey. So Scroll is a project that is currently ongoing in full its safety for children and their rights online. So that survey also stated that uh, majority of our children access internet from homes. Mm -hmm. So that means it's a problem and uh, there's so much that needs to be done. And the way these children are affected by internet is them first having the access. So when they access social media, are there proper security settings mm -hmm. that ensure that they are protected from the perpetrators who are online? And uh, the forms of of exploitation that we experience there are one of them is maybe cyberbullying then we also have one that is currently trending called online child sexual exploitation and abuse mm -hmm. so this is where somebody pretends to be maybe a friend a stranger that is and uh, they lure this child by maybe building a trust relationship with the child over time mm -hmm. then in the event at some point after this child developing trust with this person he begins grooming this child into sexual activities. Mm -hmm. So this could be live streaming of child sexual abuse material. This could be maybe introducing that child to child pornography. This person could even be sexting this child. So we normally call sex chatting sexting. Yeah. So in the end, it might end up being sextortion. So this person again starts using the things they've done with this child, maybe sh the material that this child has shared with him to blackmail this child, to maybe get information or maybe get money or any other form of incentive that you might want from this child. Mm -hmm. So this also affects the child in the sense that uh, this child will be, maybe she does not want, or definitely even you will not want maybe the people who you respect, like your parents, relatives, to see the bad things that you do in the internet. Mm -hmm. So imagining that somebody is going to showcase that to the world, because mm -hmm. internet is does not have boundaries yeah, whenever something never forgets. It, yes whenever something is shared there it goes globally mm -hmm. so as a result this child begins having self esteem issues this child might even have suicidal tendencies because they do not want what that they shared with the perpetrator to be posted online mm -hmm. so in extreme cases it leads to death because now this child does not want to to be exposed out there mm -hmm. but unfortunately the child has interacted by a perpetrator mm -hmm. yes is it possible to filter some of this content from getting to a child a child's maybe gadgets mm -hmm. is it is it is it possible because I know there is a way maybe you can filter but just how sustainable is that mm -hmm. yeah, Vivian there, there are quite a lot of um, uh, gaps mm -hmm. around all this uh, discussion around child online safety mm -hmm. um, I, I know my colleague talked about the survey that was done um, uh, recently that really tells us that 13% uh, of children said, yes, we get people asking for even sexual materials, mm. and we don't even know where we can report that. Mm -hmm. So it, that tells you that even the caregivers, the parents, the t teachers in terms of capacity knowledge to guide and monitor these children is, is lacking. Mm -hmm. a and that is where now if I had a phone, and I give out to my child, I have to be, to ensure that those kind of filters, those kind of, uh, I block, I restrict some sites they cannot view, mm -hmm. but is, is that the case mm -hmm. across a number of caregivers and communities? Mm -hmm. So there's already a gap among us, the communities and caregivers, mm -hmm. uh, and they lack the knowledge to really do this and monitor, guide uh, their children to be safe online. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say there is a big role to be played by the private sector. Yeah. Uh, private sector, uh, the surface internet uh, providers uh, uh, have a role in this. And um, every time we're talking about who are the players in this uh, space, who do we need to bring on board, they are very key. Mm -hmm. Because then 
in their in their platforms in their functionalities they could also have those restrictions or even create awareness um, and uh, even have some educational campaigns uh, within their products to create awareness ab around child online safety mm -hmm. the, the question is then are we doing enough and that's why we, we are here actually to sensitize to, to even through this event and uh, all this week we've had these kind of activities to, to really ensure everyone is on board. Mm -hmm. Because like my colleague said, children are meeting strangers. That's a fact. And they are being coerced, they are being uh, bullied, they are being exploited online. But then are we even getting the reports? Mm -hmm. And when we get the reports, what are we doing about them? Again, there's that gap. Mm -hmm. And children are also fearing if I report this is happening, mm -hmm. will I be blamed mm -hmm. or will I be supported? Mm -hmm. uh, and in a number of um, uh, times, because of the capacity, because of the understanding, because of not many people understand this whole online safety, they, they, ended up, they end up being blamed. And therefore, they choose to, to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the, the impact and the uh, consequences like uh, my colleague has spoken about. Yeah. So there's quite a lot to be done. Um, by so many actors um, uh, to ensure that safe online is achieved for children. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as it is, uh, maybe Kevin, Kevin, what measures have been put in place to ensure that we try minimize some of these threats? Mm. Okay. Um, so in, in terms of measures, I'll, I'll like to talk about a few things. First of all, there is, um, we have policies and laws it is actually, we have a Children's Act 2022, we have the Computer Cybercrime as the Computer Misuse Act. Mm -hmm. There are so many acts that are out there that will help us mm -hmm. um, deal with this online safety thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start with the Children's Act that I know actually that has, is, has declared things like cyberbullying, mm -hmm. grooming, what she was talking about, like when an adult pretends to be a child's friend and they are trying to get their trust for sexual purposes or for exploitation purposes. Mm. So, the Children's Act, actually the Children's Act has outlawed most of these things. If you bully a child online, you are subject to getting arrested and, and getting prosecuted. All, all, all these crimes that are online. Now, um, apart from policy, we have the government has also, in partnership with our stakeholders, We've come up with a few things that we have done. There's, a, there's created a child online protection department mm -hmm. that sits in the Directorate of Children's Services, whose sole purpose is um, to make sure that children are protect, protected online and their rights are being respected. Um, after that, we also had a national plan, plan of action for, on OXER, which runs from 2022 to 26. Mm -hmm. Then we've also done, um, as the Child Online Protection and the Directorate of Children's Services, we've also done a training manual for the social service on matters of online sexual exploitation and abuse. Mm -hmm. So that was launched last year. Um, we're still to roll it out. Um, we also have standard op operating procedures for the same, which is also another manual that's going to be launched tomorrow in Akuru. Mm -hmm. um, so on matters protecting, there's still, as she said, there's still a lot, there's still a lot of gaps, but there's a lot that has been, has been done from our side as government. We set up an anti-human trafficking and child protection unit in every police station. People, I, I know people don't know about that. Mm. It's in yeah. every police station? Um, most of them. Ideally it will be, mm. but right now we have them in specific ones. Mm. But ideally, at the end of at the end of the uh, at the end of the process, because it, ju it just started, mm -hmm. uh, we try to it to have a, a child protection unit in every every police station where children can go and expo even by themselves. You get and this child protection unit will also has a place where they can be kept safe. It normally mm -hmm. has a proper it's like a proper little house mm -hmm. where they stay. There is one in Kilimani, a very good one, just in case you would, if somebody would like to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, also, the, we have a, a call center, it's called 116, which is 119 upside down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that has been done for, to try and protect these children. Ideally, maybe what 
I will say is missing is a bit of sensitization. As she said, we are struggling because we have information and we have policy, but mm -hmm. people don't know about it. So that is something we really need, need to collaborate with the media, with, with everyone. Like so that we can create that and end all this because as she said again mm -hmm. I'll have to ask you to hold that thought okay. we take a short break and no then problem. we come back and continue on no that problem, thank you. all right we take a break right now Thank you for staying with us. We are back with our conversation and we are looking at Safer Internet Day as we get to commemorate it tomorrow. Now, uh, before we went on that break, uh, Kevin, you were just talking about sensitization and you were just telling us that not enough sensitization has been done. So what is stopping us from doing enough sensitization on such a matter? Um. So that's a tricky question. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, things get to be overtaken by, by events. And in that, in that I mean that um, when we, every time we try to create awareness or some, on something, it peaks, then something else comes up which takes over. Mm -hmm. Right? That is the nature of life and nature of nothing stays hot forever. Right? So... Um, I'd like to say what is uh, ideally there's a bit of um, I would want to say resources mm -hmm. are a bit of are a bit constrained because this is a message that needs to get all the way to the farthest corners of Kenya and uh, we seem to be not seem but we have a slight resource constraint so ideally we try to partner as government we partner with our our stakeholders so we all do we, we're all in one program actually like the safe click she was talking about right they're all in the same program so they will find it like they'll do it in Mombasa and you guys will do it somewhere else mm -hmm. yeah so ideally it's collaboration it's collaboration to get that message because as much as we want to be all capable and all everything it is sometimes good to agree where you have limitations and seek and seek for assistance so if if we could all like um come up with a strategy mm -hmm. government and the csos mm -hmm. and sorry the charitable children's in institutions mm -hmm. together with the ngos and the private sector because you'll find sometimes well we as government are to, uh, they are trying to sensitize people on oxia in malindi and that's the same place um their organization is that the same place the organization is what happens to that that person in somewhere in nakuru you know so there needs to be like a bit of um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah maybe, maybe to add on because um, i work for an organization called teredes homes netherlands mm -hmm. yeah. which is committed to um uh, protecting children from exploitation and also making their voices count so one gap, I think, uh, also like my colleague has mentioned, resources, but also looking at the whole environment, a whole ecosystem when it comes to child protection. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we need also to put the children at the center because uh, do more of child children empowerment, ensure they know about their rights, mm -hmm. uh, and they can also report when their rights have been violated. Mm -hmm. So th there is quite a gap when it comes mm -hmm. to reporting of some of these cases across the country. Yeah. And one is because communities are not even aware uh, whether this is an abuse or exploitation. Mm -hmm. Then they see it, oh, mm -hmm. my child has my phone and they can play games. They don't know who they meet online. Mm -hmm. and they, they are not bothered and they don't even have even that thought of could they be doing some um, um, inappropriate maybe activities online. Mm -hmm. And I think if we empower children themselves uh, to be able to know signs of uh, exploitation or mm -hmm. how to protect themselves online and where to report when they sense a danger while online, that would be a very critical um, strategy towards ending uh, OXE in yeah. this country. Mm -hmm. and, and also not to forget about the communities. Mm -hmm. There's a concept we, we call SMART when we, we are engaging with children. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just highlights the, the tips 
children need to have when they are, they are online. Mm -hmm. And the SAFE, the S stands for SAFE, they have to remain SAFE online. Mm -hmm. uh, M stands for meeting, if they meet strangers, they need to know how to behave when mm. they meet strangers. You don't get an, a, a request, a friend request, and you accept immediately. Mm. And then the A stands for, um, is it access or? Accept. Yeah, acceptance. How do you accept? Do you accept a, a stranger online? Mm -hmm. Then R is um, you, you reliable, reliable people. You can also share if there's a concern. Uh, like you've met a danger or someone you are not really sure or requesting you for your details, do you have a reliable person to tell or to share or to ask? Mm -hmm. And then the R is, a, the T is for telling someone reliable. So we are working in, in child rights clubs in schools to create this awareness, to sensitize children and also the teachers mm -hmm. so that they can support whenever there is any concern of uh, online child sexual exploitation. Yeah, and I'm also looking at the parents and the guardians and mm -hmm. teachers as well now that you've uh, brought them in because they are mm -hmm. part of the lives of these children. Mm -hmm. How, what do they look out for? Mm -hmm. Maybe for them to be able to identify that probably this child mm -hmm. is being groomed or probably this child is going through something. Mm -hmm. You know, how are they able to identify? Thank you so much, Vivian. I think uh, your question is very timely because uh, in our line of duty or as we interact with parents and children on a daily basis, we've realized that parents do not have uh, capacity mm -hmm. to monitor and guide their children in the online space. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, if probably you feel that something is not, is not right with your child, it's important to take action. And uh, especially with regards to matters to do with child online safety, mm -hmm. if your child, maybe you've bought the child a gadget, let's say the mm -hmm. child has a mobile phone or has a laptop, and this child keeps on isolating themselves, maybe when they're speaking to somebody, they step out of the room where you are, mm -hmm. then uh, when they're speaking to that person, maybe after that conversation, when the child comes out, maybe the moods are not okay, mm -hmm. and then sometimes maybe you don't hear the child talking about this particular friend that maybe they interact mm -hmm. with online. Mm -hmm. Those are danger signs mm -hmm. that you really need to look, to look out for as a parent. So even as we give our children these gadgets, or as we allow our children to maybe interact with the smart TVs that we have in our homes because you know currently parents even have Wi-Fi so mm -hmm. children access Wi-Fi in their homes it's very important to make sure that those guidelines and controls are in place in your in your house have mm -hmm. some set of rules that these children live by with regards to access to internet so for instance you can as a parent you can just uh, talk to the children and tell them that whenever you're accessing this phone or maybe interacting with somebody on social media, or maybe calling somebody, you need to do it in a common space, like a common room, like a living room, so that you can be able to monitor. Mm -hmm. Then again, sometimes normally find ourselves giving our children our phones, we are adults. So whatever content you're consuming on your phone might not be appropriate for your child. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very vigilant. If you realize that you cannot buy your child maybe a phone of their own, it's important that you also ensure that you have privacy settings on your phone. Mm -hmm. Let your child not go to your Google history. Probably you've Googled something that a child should not access. Mm -hmm. And our children nowadays, we normally, we, we call ourselves digital migrants, but them, they are born in the digital era. Mm -hmm. So you might be assuming that your child does not know what you, you use your phone for. But interestingly, they know. Mm -hmm. Other, even the ones that cannot write. Nowadays, there is Google Voice. The child can just click there and speak something and it pops up and that information is on is with them mm -hmm. and maybe it's not something that they're not allowed to consume then again they interact with their peers a lot so you might think that you have controls within your within your space but what about when they go to school what about when they play out there what are those other children consuming you may not know so it is you to take it upon yourself to talk to them make sure you equip them in a manner that even if they interact with something out there they are willing to come and share with you that, mm -hmm. mommy or daddy, I, I interact with this content. Is it appropriate for me? Yeah. But if you also create a barrier between you and them and you don't develop a trust relationship, you don't be a little bit friendly or friendly with them, it becomes very difficult for them to tell you the challenges that they are going through. Mm -hmm. So parents should, they are the people who interact on a daily basis with children and teachers. So it's very important that they develop that trust relationship so that the children can be able to share with them whenever they face mm. any challenges mm -hmm. navigating the online space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it correct to say that parents are failing the children of now? 
because uh, we live in a society where everyone is busy. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents are out there busy trying to make money. Mm -hmm. So the children rarely spend time with their parents. So most of the times the children are just at home maybe with their helps mm -hmm. and with their gadgets. So is it safe to say that the parents are failing on this? Can we blame the parents? Um, maybe if I can't, I wouldn't <laughs> say they are failing. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of, um, as we say, like, it's, it's lack of information for most of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, in every, I don't want to say in every market there's a madman, but in every basket there's a rotten apple. Mm -hmm. There are those parents who actually don't care. Mm -hmm. We have met them and we have tried to educate them, but still, for them it doesn't really matter. Mm. But you'll see, uh, what I find mostly is most parents don't have this information, mm. honestly, because they don't even know. As she said, you don't, they don't know like bullying online is a crime. Mm. So somebody will get bu bullied and commit suicide like, or injure themselves mm. and they don't know that there's redress for bullying mm. on someone online because mm. they know Mm. If you beat this child, if you beat my child, that is bullying. That's mm. all they know. Mm. Right? But they don't even send in that text. So I wouldn't really blame it on parents. Maybe it's a bit of uh, there's a disconnect in the information. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And how can the children themselves um, keep, keep safe? Yeah. yeah. Now for children, again, it's children, it's about, there's a smart concept that she mm. talked about, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then again, the most, what I would say for children is talk to someone, don't children it's ideally telling children to keep themselves safe, is mm. kind of mm. it's kind of, um, I don't say an oxymoron, but mm -hmm. you find like, talk to your children let your children know these things are out there mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, we, sti we are still in we're still as we as Child Online Protection Department are still out here trying to tell parents mm. to give their children gadgets. Because mm. we go to places in no, no, and people are refusing, but it's bringing a lot of disparity because mm. how is your, ch your child supposed to, to be able to, I don't to, to compete or to be at the same level with child Y, mm. whose parents have sat them down and talked to them and they have all this information mm. and they have a phone, mm. even school-wise, with, with the other one done with, with the phone is more advantaged. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be better and ideally people need to talk to children about these things, mm -hmm. tell them that they are there. You know, when you, when you give information, you know what kind of information you're going to give and how you're going to give it. Mm -hmm. But normally we as Africans put, made some topics taboo. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to tell my child that people ask for people for naked images online. Mm. I don't want to have that conversation with my child. Mm. So when they get that information out there, mm. they're called nudes mm. and they sound cool. Sorry to say, they sound cool when send nudes, when people say send nudes, because mm. it's something that goes on, uh, on online. Mm. It sounds cool, but now for this child, but what is what? Mm. So ideally, mm. for children to be able to be safe mm. online, mm we need to have, have those com those uncomfortable conversations with them. Mm -hmm. that, is, mm -hmm. that is my point of view. Yeah, you had yeah. something to add on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with, with relation to what uh, Mr. Nyaga has said, mm -hmm. so children need people to talk to. So he earlier mentioned that there is a, a national child helpline service existing. We yes. call it 116. So this line is toll free and it operates 24 hours, 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So whenever a child is in distress, not necessarily on child online safety matters. They just call that line. Behind that line, we have agents who are counselors by profession. So allow me to ask: Does it work? Because sometimes yes. some of these yes, call lines, they, they 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 never seem to work. You can call and call and call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the line works. Okay. And uh, in the event that maybe sometimes you call and maybe you are put online for long, we have other options you can explore. You can go on social media. We have the child line Kenya. We have uh, 116 on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, that you can just chat and somebody will respond. Again, we also have a WhatsApp line that is 0722 116 116 that they can drop in a, a chat and somebody will be there to support. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. it's, it's important that they get people to talk to so that they can be supported. Mm -hmm. Because in most cases, we realize our children are affected. 
because uh, initially he mentioned that we have a, a unit called the Anti-Human Trafficking Child Protection Unit. So this unit receives 60 cyber tips mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So these are information that are related to the DCI with relation to crimes, on online crimes. Mm -hmm. So that means it's very dangerous. And at the moment, you only have 17 cases in court and only two have been prosecuted. Mm. So that tells you that... Uh, no, not many cases are being reported as much as a lot is happening with regards to online abuse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I'll go back to what Mr. Um, Danga was saying. Uh, and I, I really want to talk about empowerment, empowerment of children. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we assume they are just there, they, they don't listen. But we've actually seen a lot of change mm -hmm. when working with children, empowering them as even mm -hmm. change engines. And uh, right now in a program that we are running, we are mm -hmm. calling Safety for Children and, uh, and Their Rights mm -hmm. Online, mm -hmm. we have empowered a number of children and they've become peer educators. They, they're even reaching out to their peers, to other children in their schools, in their communities. And recently we spoke to some group of children and they are telling us, I think we listen more when we hear it from our own, our peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when our peers are sensitizing us, they are giving us tactics on how to be safe online, we like that. So it's high time also all actors to consider, uh, I think, integrating, putting children at the center of all our interventions. Mm -hmm. We don't assume this sensitization strategy will work if we have not spoken with children themselves. Mm -hmm. How do they, we want to engage them? What do they want to ensure that they are safe online? And how can we support them as actors? Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very important. I know we are doing uh, big strides in the country. Mm -hmm. We have the Children's Assembly, which is bringing children together. Mm -hmm. This is a topic we can have it uh, during those events. We have education in the education sector, child rights clubs in schools where children are trained, they have been empowered, uh, and teachers also supported uh, to be able to, to support children who are either victims or vulnerable to, of exploitation only. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a lot. I, I know many actors have come up with so many strategies, but I think my, my, my urge is can we check whether children really are keen or, or these are the strategies that will work and children voices are integrated in those strategies. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we, we are clear that we cannot talk about children without them. So we have to bring them on board at all levels, mm -hmm. including monitoring of those interventions, including evaluating and even hearing their voices whether those interventions all players are working on have worked or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is very key. Yeah. A and I know child participation is uh, gaining a lot of interest across the, the actors, mm -hmm. but then we need to really get it right. Mm -hmm. It's not just come, participate in this activity and go home. No, it's working with them that journey from the start to the end, mm -hmm. yeah, and more so listening to their voices, always. Yeah, yeah. that's the most important bit, yes. just getting to listen to them and getting to let them know that there's someone who can listen to you. Yes. So speak up whenever yeah. there's something. Yeah. And I also like, I, I think you're the one who mentioned that parents should form a relationship with their child in that mm -hmm. it does not matter what happens they will be free to tell mm -hmm. you know to tell the parent to tell the guardian they'll be free to talk about it mm -hmm. no matter how sensitive it yes. may uh, it may uh, be I want us to get into the theme for this year that is together for a better internet when we talk about together for a better internet if you can expound on that what is it um. So together for a better internet is ideally what I was talking about collaboration. Mm. It's just a call for everybody who's in this child protection space mm -hmm. or in the internet, not only child protection, um, any, everything to do with that on, or, uh, with matters online. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a lot, a lot, a lot of collaboration, yeah. right? Because technology is evolving at such a, such a fast pace. Um, mm -hmm. We've come in like 20... 20 years we've come from no cell phones to AI. Mm. That's like in 24 years, right? Mm. So what happens in the next 20 years? Mm -hmm. you know, it, it keeps going faster and faster. So together for a better internet is because no single person is all knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. We are government, mm. this is what we know. They are NGOs, this is what they know. They are tech companies, this is what they know. This is the media, this is what the media knows private organization. So it's about all of us working together because um, the, the 
number one guiding principle for children matters is the best interest of the child come first mm -hmm. whatever you are doing you have to put the best interest of the child first okay mm -hmm. and the second one will be do no harm mm -hmm. those are the first two things that we we talk about when it comes to child protection mm -hmm. so it's about all of us coming together and understanding what needs to be done because sometimes i think errors happen mm -hmm. because we have we don't have information mm -hmm. yeah you'll find um somebody like um like sometimes i'll post a, ch a picture of a child who has been beaten in school that is illegal actually i mm. cannot I'm not, you're not supposed to depict the face and the or in the name or the location or the parents of a child who has undergone any, any of these abuses yeah yeah so at the end of the day it's talking about collaboration what does the what how can the media help us protect these children how can the government do one two three four so it's about coming together and finding our common way forward because again if we do things in small pockets they don't get as much traction mm -hmm. but we, if we decided to move the whole country mm. we'll need everybody to come together all right mm. as we wind up i want you to tell me about the function happening tomorrow it's it will be taking place in um nakuru just tell me what should we expect mm -hmm. yeah thank you vivian and i know it's a it's an activity actually led by the government mm. but basically bringing together all stakeholders like he says eh? we mm. need to start the conversations together we mm. need to bring everybody on the table and i know uh, you've mentioned a lot of uh, actors and not to forget religious leaders who are very key in protecting children academia because we also need data to inform our interventions mm -hmm. quite a number and i know all, all these actors have been invited mm -hmm. sensitized about this event and it will be an event again to recommit mm -hmm. like to revisit the issue recommit ourselves and and forge forward in terms of making uh, better uh, um, achievements for children when it mm -hmm. comes to oxy so um, the event will bring all uh, actors including children uh, from I think within uh, Nakuru County, from the national, I think people are invited to just say uh, come, uh, listen, mm -hmm. share, uh, exchange, uh, and forge a way forward. Yeah. So everyone yeah. is invited. Everyone is invited. Yeah. Everybody can come. It's an open day for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the ASK showgrounds in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a few guests from government and the uh, private sector and the mm -hmm. civil society. Mm -hmm. We'll also be launching the standard oper operating procedures mm -hmm. for child for oxia yeah, that yeah. is online child sex sexual exploitation and ab abuse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, that's one of the it's one of the first of those kind of documents in africa mm -hmm. so a lot of credit to our government mm -hmm. for doing that yeah it's yeah. It's, it's really a milestone mm. all right yeah. i'll ask you to give us your parting shot okay, okay. so my parting shot today is uh to encourage children, everybody, every duty bearer, every parent, every other responsible adult, to encourage children to always report any forms of abuse that are projected to them, be it online abuse, be it physical abuse, be it emotional abuse, because it's important for our children to be mentally well and healthy so that we can have a better future tomorrow. Then again, in the event that that abuse has not been protected, has not been avoided before it happens. It's also mm -hmm. important to offer victim support. We have counseling in the event the child needs medical support and any other support that may require legal and all that. Then again, for places of reporting, we have the 116, which is toll free. You can also report to the nearest children office, sub county children office. You can report to the chief. Mm -hmm. You can also report uh, to. There is a, a line that the DCI has. We call it Future Aqua DCI. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 0800 722 703. Then you can also report through the Kenya Computer Inc Incidents Response Team that is managed by the Communication Authority. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for this particular conversation. And you are doing a good thing in just trying to put out the sensitization on child protection mainly on the internet mm. and now i want to um take i want to ask us to take it upon ourselves you know we have a total of 17.86 million uh internet user that users that is as at the beginning of last year from kenya so i want us each to take up the responsibility of just being responsible because when we are talking about predators 
we are the ones, we are the predators. Mm. You know, when we're talking about people who are, you know, um, using these children sexually and just trying to uh, groom them sexually, we are the ones that we are talking about. So mm. let's just take it upon ourselves to be human enough, you know, and act right. This is where we call it a wrap right here on Good Morning Kenya. I have been your host, Vivian Degua. Until next time, have a good day.